multi-use slip, I think, is kind of unusual and worth talking about. It's called dry, dry brush slip application, and you can, you can, it's about viscosity, it's about flow. So typically when people use slip, they are either trailing it out of a syringe or they're um, painting it on, and the flow properties are really um, high, meaning it's very fluid, it's very liquidy, you paint it on, it coats nicely. Well, if you stiffen up your slip, you know, remove some of the moisture from it, um, you're cutting down on its flow properties. It, you're, it's, high, it's getting a higher viscosity. So I play with that. On some pieces, using it in its very high flow, low viscosity, and on other places, just even on this cup, you see how that slip is all beaded up? Um, that's high viscosity. It's, it's just, you know, to use plain language, the slip was really stiff. Um, so painting it on, it doesn't just lay down. It sort of beads up. It, it skips and it creates an uneven surface. So if you paint layer after layer, you're, you're going over an uneven surface, which makes it even more uneven. So I prepared these slabs to show you. I just have three different slips that are uh, each a different viscosity. And um, we'll go ahead and just get started. I use these cheapo schmeepo brushes a lot. They're like a buck, hockey brushes made in China for a lot of the surface that I cover. I also use not cheapo schmeepo, these kind of handmade brushes that are made by individuals. This is really much more delicate work when I want to illustrate. After I put the base slips on and I'm doing some illustration, I'll use these because the line you get with these, you cannot get with these. You can't, you just can't get them any other way. So um, I brought my test tiles to show you the range of color that I use. And on any given pot, I mean, I might have 15 colors on a teapot. So what I wanted to do was show you how these slips behave at, at different, you know, I could say at different thicknesses, but that's not quite the right word, but that gets at it, you know. We're going from thin to moderate to thick. So we're going to start with a thin which people are probably much more familiar with. I'm just giving it a stir. When I use this kind of slip, it brushes on super smooth, all is well. This is the moderate thickness or viscosity. Viscosity is a, a flow principle. So this is moderate and, you know, it stands up better, but it's still kind of falling over, but it won't you know, eventually it would come out, but I can hold this upside down and it's not coming out. If I did that to the thin stuff, it would just pour right out. So this stuff, at, at, at this viscosity, it'll paint on, but it skips, skips a bit. And if I let that stiffen, you know, I can get a pretty nice surface starting there. And slip is liquid clay, so it is opaque. But because it's skipping, it's showing the surface underneath. So if I wanted to take another color after this was stiff, I could start building up layers, some of the colors peeking out, you know, and uh, that might interest some of you. And then the really high viscosity, this stuff, I mean, this is a higher jar, so, and there's not as much slip in it, so I can't do my little uh, stand it up trick, but trust me, it stands up and there's no way that's coming out. So you can see, just getting it on the brush is challenging because it, it doesn't flow on. So using this stuff, and these slabs are somewhat stiffened up. If you just rolled a fresh slab, it's too wet and, it, and it, the clay itself is gonna be picked up by the slip and it's gonna get muddy. So you wanna let your, your pots and your slabs stiffen. So this stuff is really hard to brush on. I have to push to get it to leave the brush. And what happens is it takes longer to apply, but the result is um, it's worth it. It's worth the time giving me that really bumpy texture. And in, and in this case, it's even leaving some globs behind, but you just brush over them. So the slip itself can become the texture. You don't need texture under it necessarily. Okay, so by the same token, these three slabs have been stiffened up. Um, they were made and they were immediately textured. 
after they were just rolled out and they were fresh soft clay, that's when I used this corrugated metal tool. So what I want to say about putting these different viscosities of a slip over texture is the moderate is the best one. It's going to pick up and amplify your texture. The stiff stuff is going to kind of compete with your texture because it wants to make its own texture. It's not going to really record the marks. It's going to uh, somewhat record them and also kind of overrule them. And this liquidy stuff is going to fill it in, you know, so it kind of obliterates it. Going back to the moderate, so see how that just picks it up? It even picked up like a fingerprint or something. It's very cool to me. You can go both ways. You can go, you can just keep it going one way. And I do put, I do go over it and over it and over it because the glaze that I designed, the glaze is designed to eat the slip a little bit because I like, the, I like to see a surface that has some randomness, some unpredictable qualities to it. Um, and so if the slip isn't on thick enough, it'll disappear. So you definitely want to make sure that it's on thick enough. And then the last one is this really dense, highly viscous. And it's picking it up. It's picking it up pretty well, but it's also leaving a lot of globby stuff. You play with it, you know, play with it with the different colors and see what works for you.